Hello everyone, welcome back to a new tutorial. Today you will learn how to handle data pagination using Pagian library. As always, you will learn the objectives of this course in the context of a small application using the recommended architecture, which is clean architecture, and dependency injection. If you are not familiar with Roam database, I highly suggest following the course that I have created for this purpose, as well as how to create clean architecture projects with dependency injection. The links in the description below. With that being said, let's jump right in. What is Pagin library? Pagin library, which is the new version of this Pagin library is Pagin tree, is a library that belongs to Jetpack suite of libraries, allowing developers to easily handle pagination from a large data set from a local database or a ROM data source more efficiently. The implementation of Pagin library fits perfectly into clean architecture as well as other libraries from Jetpack. The major reasons behind using Pagin library are in memory caching, this will use system uh, resource with an optimized manner during pagination, optimize use of network bandwidth and system resource, automatically requests new data while user scrolls to end of uh, loaded data, coroutines and flow friendly, providing error handling during uh, loading as well as refresh and retry features. The objectives of the, this tutorial are learn how to add use case layer in clean architecture. I know it's uh, beyond the scope of a Pagian library, but believe me, it's a good thing to add to your arsenal. Handling pagination from a remote data source, handling pagination from local data source. As a bonus, you will learn how to uh, cache data for an offline use in your application. In this particular project, I have decided to start from uh, an empty Jetpack Compose project so we can build things uh, step by step. So the first step, we will uh, get out of the way the uh, dependencies that we will need in this particular project. So let's open a Gradle file. Let's start from the build that's Gradle. Here I'm going to add the extensions that we will need uh, for uh, the libraries. So the extensions that we will need are as follow. The uh, Compose UI version is one to one. Uh, so one to one is the version as of I'm recording this uh, tutorial. Perhaps you're going to uh, update the, those versions. Compose version is 1.2.0 and the ROM version is 2.3. Uh, and of course the Pagian version. So first of all, this is for the uh, Compose uh, library. And this is for the version of, or uh, the library of uh, ROM database because we are going to, to need it in this tutorial. As well as this is the Pagian version, which is the Pagian library uh, which is page entry okay so uh next i think i have to to check the versions of uh, okay 7.3 that looks fine 7.3.0 that looks fine and here instead of 7.1.6.0 uh, i'm going to do here 1.7.0 and i have to add uh, the dependencies class path for dependency injection so here I'm going to add the dependencies for class path. So our Bradle, uh, our build that Gradle uh, projects file is done. Let's move to the build Gradle for the module file. So I'm going to add some plugins for a parcelized dependency injection uh, with health and Kotlin caps. And I'm going to change here the version compile version, which is 33 and the target SDK is 33 here. So the dependencies that we, we will need is a view model and the observables, coroutine and the coroutine lifecycle scope, navigation, because we're going to use navigation here, retrofit with JSON as a converter, and the health for dependency injection, call for imagery, constraint layout, health navigation, splash screen. And the library of accompanies that's gonna give us the uh, ability to create uh, the carousel 
Kotlin extension for Kotlin support. So basically, this is, those are the dependencies needed for a uh, room database. And this dependency needed uh, for Kotlin support for room. And uh, for paging tree library, this is the only uh, dependency that you will need to add to your uh, build module file. And for paging compose, those are the dependencies that you will need for paging compose. And I have added uh, a new widget from um, a third party library that's going to allow us to show star rating in our compose. So after doing that, let's synchronize our uh, projects. So I have just changed the compose version to 1.3.0. So we have everything up to date. As clean architecture is the recommended Android application architecture, we will put the paging source class as well as the remote mediator, which I'm going to talk about in this video, in the repository of the data layer. The paging, uh, the purpose uh, behind this is that view model won't care which source the data comes from. Is it locally? Is it remotely? So we talk about a single source of truth. So under resource, drawable, I'm going to add the drawables that we are going to need in this particular project. So I've just deleted those drawables and, uh, and here I'm going to pass my own uh, drawables. You can add your own drawables or you can just download them from the uh, GitHub repository. So this is the first step. I'm going to add the MIP map uh, for my for my projects. So, so for the MIP map, I'm going just to delete those. Don't need them anyway, so I'm going just to add my own. For the uh, mid map, so I'm going to paste here my uh, background uh, icon or foreground icon. So it's going to be under drawable. And here in mid map, I'm going to add new image assets. And I have to choose the path of this image asset. So it's going to be IC launcher background or foreground. And I'm going to change the background layer here for my background layer. So uh, here under drawable, I'm going to add launcher background. That's good. I'm going to hit next, finish. So afterwards, I have added now the map map to, to my projects. I'm going to add uh, the strings that I will need throughout or we will need throughout this uh, particular project. So I'm going to go to resource uh, values here and, and in string. So those are the strings that we are going to need. I'm going to add the fonts that I'm going to use in this uh, particular project. You can add your own. So here under resource, I'm going to create a new uh, folder or yeah, under resource, I'm going to create a new folder directory. I'm going to name it font. Great. So those are the fonts that I've uh, chosen for this, pro that I've chosen for this uh, project. So now I'm going to add the themes night theme and dark theme for this application. So this is the theme that I'm going to create for this uh, light theme color. I'm going to add the color background lights afterwards. And I need to add the theme for the uh, night or dark mode. So for the theme, uh, night theme, it's going to be the same, but I'm going to choose another uh, background color. So let's move to the color or colors file. And I will add my own colors here for this theme. So those are the colors that we will need in our application. So let's come back to the theme. And here we have for the light color or, for, or the light theme, it's going to be this color. And for the night theme, it's going to be a dark color. So now we're going to add the splash screen theme. So in values, I'm going to add a new uh, XML resource file. I'm going, to name, I'm going to name it splash theme. So the splash theme is going to have as a window splash screen background, this particular color for the splash screen animation icon. It's going to be the splash logo that we have created in the drawable for the window splash screen animation duration. It's going to be four uh, seconds for the post splash screen theme. It's going to be the theme and window translucent status. So it's, which means that uh, the, the status bar is going to be a uh, transparency and the rest of the screen is going to fill until the 
top of our mobile screen. So here uh, I'm going just to change this TV show menu. I don't like this name, so it's going to be TV Mania here. I can do TV Mania. And here as well, TV Mania. And in the splash team, TV Mania. So now let's go to the, um, let's configure the manifest.xml. So I'm going to add here internet permission. So for the label and here, I'm going to choose the rounded one. What else? Uh, okay. So for the theme, it's going to be splash theme. Sorry, I'm going to add instead of this one. So it's going to be theme, that's app, that's starting. I think that's, that's pretty much it for the uh, manifest.xml. So we have added so far our drawables. We have added our fonts, mip map, values, considering the colors, splash theme and strings and the themes of dark and the light. So dark theme and the light theme. Now let's transform this uh, project to a clean architecture projects. Under TV show, Mania package, I'm going to add a new package for dependency injection. I'm going to call it application. Another package for the same purpose, dependency injection, it's going to be called the I. So the application uh, package is going to, is going to hold uh, the application class and the DI is going to hold the app module. And we have the UI. I'm going to add another uh, package. It's going to be called utils or util package. It's going to have the utility classes and functions that will help us in our uh, application to perform some tasks. So I'm going to add instead of doing data layer and inside the TV show menu, instead of doing data layer, uh, domain layer and presentation layer, I'm going to add a new layer. It's going to be called feature TV show. It's going to be called generally a feature uh, module. So the feature model is a group of actions in a, a single uh, fun option or let's call let's name it module. For example, in the application, the action of listing TV shows and visiting a TV show, it's related and it's related actions will be grouped in a single module. It's going to be called feature TV show. So here I'm going to add a new package and I'm going to name it fee, uh, so package feature TV show. So inside the feature TV show, we will create the rest of the uh, layers for, the, for a clean architecture. So the question that you can ask me now, why you haven't uh, just did data layer uh, presentation layer and domain layer as you did before in the first application. So the first application was a, a small one and let's assume that you want to build a very big application for this purpose. You're not going to group all the, all the features on all the modules inside one module because it's, it's uh, badly organized. So I'm going to explain and give you a, a very simple example. Let's say in the future, we want to add another option or another module for this application. Let's call it from now on a feature. The feature will be for authentication that will handle login and registration. So as the application grows, we have more modules to create and the another developer when perhaps join our team, he's going to notice, Hey, the, the TV show feature. So that's pretty self-explanatory. It's going to take care of listing TV shows, visiting TV shows, etc., and another uh, feature which is authentication. So he's he he's gonna say or she's gonna say, yeah, in this particular um, uh, module we will talk about only authentication and so on. So as the application grows, we can scale it uh, easily with this uh, feature-oriented architecture. So inside the feature TV show, we're going to create the uh, normal uh, clean architecture layers or the three main components. Let's start with the data layer, domain layer and the presentation layer. So it's, it's not related to uh, clean architecture, just to organize our workflow, I'm going to add here a new uh, package. 
it's going to be called activity. So let's move the main activity to that uh, UI uh, activity package. Uh, let's come back to manifest.xml, create, and let's uh, add another package. It's going to handle for us the components that we will need in this application. And that's pretty much it. So I think that our project is good to go. Let's come back to the uh, data layer. So here in the data in the data layer, I'm going to create a local package. It's going to be for our uh, local database and another package that's going to handle for us the remote data source. Another package that's going to handle or it's going to hold the repository implementation repository and we do the same thing inside of course here I'm going to create here in the local uh, the as you have seen in the project of database it's going to contain the DAO package the database package that I'm going to create now it's going to handle for us of course the uh, converters and the database definition and Android, okay, a package and another package is going to be our entities relation. It's going to have our relation between entities. So this is the, the local um, package. Let's see now the remote package. The EPI package is going to handle for the definitions or the interface of the EPI. Another package that's going to hold our DTOs. So this is the remote package and the repository. So we are done with the, the data layer. Let's go to the uh, domain layer. The domain layer, the, as you have seen in the previous tutorial, it's going to have the model. That's going to expose the DTOs to our view model. The view model is going to have the, uh, the model as a source of uh, data. Let's create a repository. The repository package is going to contain our interface. That's going to be uh, defining the methods that we will need in this application. Domain layer will be, of course, as usual, an independent layer of the rest of other layers. So now what is new? The new layer that I'm going to add in this tutorial, which is use case. I talked about it in the first episode or in the first tutorial, but we did not, uh, I didn't go further in detail how to use it and how to implement it. So it's going to be called use case layer. So what is a use case? Use case based simply is a, a single action that a user can do. For example, um, get, get in a list of a, t list in a TV show. So, so this is basically a, an action that user will load the different uh, TV shows from the database. Another action visits a TV show to see its information. A use case, for example, adding a TV show to the list of bookmarks. So those are the, the use cases that uh, we can add to our list of use cases in this uh, particular project. So how to implement this use case programmatically speaking? The class that will create as a use case will be called as a function. How to do it? We will override the operator invoke so we can do this task. And the presentation layer I'm going to add here two uh, packages. One, it's called home. So this is basically our home screen. And here it's going to be a show or a TV show. I'm going to call it show, simple as that. Now we have done setting our architecture. Let's start with dependency injection. So dependency injection, we have, of course, uh, set up all the, all the health and configuration for it in the build us gradle we will start by creating the application so it's going to be a class here uh, let's name it tv mania application so tv mania application is going to inherit from the class application and it's going to be held android application let's import this one and let's go back to the manifest that's xml and here i'm going to add i think here uh, after show Let's do Android name, TV show application, TV mania application. Inside the uh, DI package, I'm going to add a new uh, object. Okay, it's going to be called app module. And we will install in uh, singleton, singleton component 
class. And here I'm going, we're going to show, first of all, how to provide the application. So it's going to be a singleton and provides. And let's name it. It's going to be, of course, a function. Provides. You can name it whatever you like. Uh, TV Mania application. And don't forget here in the activity to, to annotate this class with, okay, uh, Android entry point. So I think I'm going to remove this greeting and this from don't need it actually. And once we are going to implement our, our activity, we will do this accordingly. So as a parameter, it will have a, a context app context. And as a return type, it's going to be TV show or TV mania application. And for the implementation, it will return application as TV mania application. So this is for dependency that we will provide. So uh, our dependency injection is pretty much done. Next, we will uh, prepare our retrofits. So to prepare our retrofit, first of all, we have to create under data, under remote, under EPI. Let's create here a new interface and let's name it. So it's going to be called an interface. Let's name it simple as that EPI. So here it's going to contain for us or to contain the uh, endpoints, the definition of endpoints. So first of all, I'm going to show you the uh, the documentation of the API that I've chosen for this tutorial. It's a very good documented uh, API. So the, the API is about a TV show and its information. The link in the description below. So for the table of content, I'm going to use uh, two endpoints, basically one for getting uh, the list of paginating TV shows. And the other one, it's going to be for uh, seeing the detail of uh, a TV show once visiting that particular TV show. There, is, there are lots of endpoints here to choose from. So you can read the uh, documentation as you want, or you can just um, extend the features of this application by using those the, one of those uh, uh, endpoints. So let's come back to um, the interface. So the first endpoint is going to be to get uh, the shows. I like to write documentation for my functions. So I'm going to, to create here. It's going to get the list of TV shows, TV shows with pagination. It's going to have in parameter page of type integer, and let's give it a description page and it's going to return course it's going to be a list so without this brackets it's going to be a list of the, the the type is going to be a tv show dto that we will create afterwards so this is how uh, i like to create my documentation so i'm going to do it's going to be of course a spending function let's call it get tv shows and it's going to return a list of tv show dto and here as a parameter it's going to be a query because in the endpoint, so I think, all right. So this is the, the endpoint that we will use. And this is the page is the query. It's going to be here page. Let's import uh, query and page. It's going to be an in integer. That's pretty much it. And I'm going to write the other endpoint, which will give, get uh, the TV show detail. So it's going to be get and the endpoint according to the API documentation. So this is going to be the API endpoint. For the first one, it's going to be the path. So this is a path and we're going to have embedded cast so we can show uh, the uh, actors in the detail of our TV show. So here it will be uh, shows dash um, or slash ID. It's going to be the, t, uh, the show ID. And we say embedded. I think it's called. Let's come back here and paste this. And we are good to go. I'm going to write a small description for this function. 
um, get the detail about TV show webcast. A parameter is going to be an ID of type integer, small description, the ID of the TV show. And as a result or a return type, it is going to be TV show. Let's name it TV show detail DTO. Nice. And it's going to give us, okay, in here, it's going to be a suspending function. Let's name it get TV show detail. So as a parameter, we said it's going to be a path and the path is uh, ID. Let's give it uh, long as a, as a type. And it's, it's going to give us as a return type TV show or TV detail. Let's just copy this one. And of course, it has to be nullable. Perhaps we're going to provide the wrong ID or something like that. So it's going to be nullable. This is the definition of our API. Now we have to create those particular uh, DTOs. One thing that I want to just uh, get off my chest, seriously, please, for anyone who's doing um, the documentation of an, an EPI. I, I, I'm not, I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken, but to me, I want just a little help with a uh, return type or the return structure. You know, it's a very time consuming, for example, let's say this is going to give us a list of some data and this data, it's going to be a TV show DTO. The TV show DTO, the, the values can be nullable. So when I am modeling uh, the re response, I have to guess what is nullable and what is not nullable. I really, I really, it's going to be a good touch to add here, just a simple, after this one, uh, a simple uh, description of what are the, the fields that you, it's going to give us a, as a JSON format and what are the nullable fields in that particular JSON uh, object. So this is just a side note because uh, I, it took me a lot of time to uh, code and to model my DTO. So I'm going to create here the DTO, first DTO, TV show DTO. So the first TV show, it's going to be DTO. It's going to have ID, name, genre, which is a list, rating, which is uh, another DTO that I have created. And don't worry about the red uh, sign. We're going to add the model afterwards. And it has an image and updated DTO. It's going to map to a TV show model and it's going to map to a TV show entity. I'm going to comment this one because we're not going to need it uh, for now. And uh, of course, th that's it for the and image DTO as well and the uh, rating DTO. So that's pretty much it for the first. I just uh, uh, grouped them in a, a package called them TV show and another one, which is a uh, TV show detail. So it's going to have an ID number, blah, 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 and, and other things. And it's related, uh, it's related DTOs. So this is the cast DTO and stuff. So it took me some time to uh, model this. So uh, you can do it manually or you can just to gain some time, copy those uh, TV show or copy those packages and paste them into your projects. Now I'm going to add for that, uh, uh, I'm going to add in the domain layer inside the model, the models that we will uh, need in our application. So the models are pretty much straightforward. Uh, for the TV show, this is a TV show and the rating and the image. You can uh, copy that from the repository and the TV show detail. Is, is, so this, this is, there is nothing new in this particular uh, two packages, import uh, the model. And for the rating, the same thing. And what else? Uh, image. And uh, what else? For the TV show detail, let's import the model. Let's import here. I'm going just to comment this one because we're going to use this in the third part, I think, of this tutorial. Import TV show DTO. And here I'm going to add import TV show detail DTO. So this is the first. Uh, class that we have to uh, code. Now we need to uh, add in the util package. You have seen this class in the first tutorial, so I'm not going to enter in detail how to create it. Uh, okay, so it's going to be called API Builder and let's create. So first of all, we're going to inject in constructor. So basically this class is going to help us 
to provide or to help us to build our retrofit instance. So it's going to be a function and it's going to be API as a return type. And let's name this function builder and it's going to be API class with an API uh, return type or an API uh, generic type. It's going to give us, as I said, API return type. So it's going to return for us a retrofit dot builder and we have to add some configurations so the first is the base url come on base url and we're not going to hard call it here it's going to be api base url i'm going to create a new file here it's going to be called uh, constant and it's going to be const api url and the base api url it's going to be here uh, from this section to this section so this is the uh, base URL and it's going to be uh, a client. We'll get it afterwards, get client, and we will add a converter factory. It's going to be a JSON converter factory. That's create. And we will call the function build and we will create the api what we have to do we have to build the function it's going to be of course a private function that's going to configure for us the client so the client's going to be an okay http client it will return okay http client dot builder and here we will add an interceptor the return value it's going to be a chain chain that's proceed after chain does proceed, we will add here the requests just to filter the the request to builder. That's also it's gonna be a, a header. Let's add uh, a header. It's gonna be a request with uh, XHTTP request and another header content type application. At the end, who will do build? So here, after um, this block and an interceptor, we will also so it's going to be return type. Let's name it client as a parameter, and we will also set the timeout just for connection timeout, read timeout, and write timeout. Afterwards, we have to create or we have to call build. Now let's create those constants in the constant file. So these are the connection timeout one. Uh, I think it's one minute. And this one, uh, I think it's one minute. And this is 15 seconds. So now we are done with the, the EPI builder. Now let's come back to the DI package and let's show health how to provide the EPI. So provides function provide API. So here I'm going to add um, as a return type API and as a parameter, it will be uh, API builder. It will return API builder dot builder and the API, it will be API. I think here it's uh, just API and as API builder. So that's uh, pretty much it. We have uh, done uh, setting up retrofit with uh, the the API builder helper class as well as the definition of our endpoints so in the next uh, tutorial we will see how to uh, add or how to do the pagination using pagin library i hope i was helpful it's been a pleasure to share with you my knowledge have a nice day and uh, bye bye <laughs>